Hey everyone, in this video, I'm gonna show you a really efficient way to use keying to avoid roto. And um, I've already done a lot of the work in this video just to speed some things up. If you wanna see an in-depth tutorial on how to use mocha for corner pinning, definitely leave a comment down below. I had recorded it for this tutorial, but I definitely just wanna focus on keying because I think this technique is really effective in speeding things up and I feel like everyone should know it. Let's get into it. Okay, so in this example, I have this clip from pexels.com of this family holding a chalk sign that says best dad ever. Let's say uh, this was on a show or a movie and the director said, I want that sign to be red and I want it to say, I love mom. So a number of things we'd have to do here, we'd have to sort of roto the fingers and the arms and even the shirt that goes over the sign. And we can use keying to speed up that process and not do all that manual work. But the first thing we're gonna have to do is track this sign and we're gonna have to do a corner pin track to replace it. Um, we're gonna do that with Mocha in AE. So we're gonna open up Mocha. Full disclosure, I've already gone ahead and done this track. So let's say we finally have our fill in there, our director's happy with it, but now we have to get these hands back in. So the fastest way to do that is with a quick key. You can key one of two ways. You can do a luma key or you can do a color key. But because the text that we want to remove is white, we don't want to do a luma key because we'll ultimately end up keeping it. The hands are a light brown color, so we want to try and key those first. So we're going to try key light. We're going to select the skin tone. And we're actually going to solo this layer. This is going to be our key. Uh, this footage is very compressed footage, so it's not going to be great. But I'm going to try and get as much of that hand as possible. And I'm going to try and fill in the rest. If you press Alt 4, you can see the alpha channel or option 4. And this, this is really great. We're getting a lot of the arm. We're getting a lot of the hands. And we're not going to have to roto, which is exactly what we want. So you can do Alt 4 or Option 4 to get back to here. Now that we have our mat sort of keyed, we want to change the result to intermediate result because all we're trying to do is get a mat. We're not trying to change colors or do any suppression or anything like that. Then we want to drop in an invert effect and set it to alpha. So we've basically extract the skin. And if we unsolo that, you can see that we've put it over the fill without having to do any roto. Very, very fast technique and I use this constantly. So now that we got the hands back in, the next thing we have to worry about is this little boy shirt. Uh, shirt goes over the fill and it's a really close color to the original text. So these shades are actually very similar. So we're gonna have to do a little bit of combo work to speed up our work here. We don't wanna roto the shirt. We still wanna try and do as much procedural as possible. So we're gonna do a couple of things. We're gonna jump into Mocha first and we're gonna track the area of the shirt. We go to the beginning. I'm just gonna draw a shape around the button area. I'm actually gonna turn this off because I don't need it. We actually don't need a ton here. We just need translation. So I'm gonna go ahead and track that forward. I just wanna track the button in the area of the shirt. All we're trying to gather here is position data so that we can then drive a mat later. This is also gonna speed up a garbage roto that we're gonna do. We're not trying to do super precise roto. We just wanna get this done as quickly as possible. So we're using tracking to our advantage. Okay, cool, the tracking is all done. And like I said, it's just to give us a, a rough uh, position track so we can drive a garbage roto. We're gonna save that garbage roto. Okay, we're gonna save that. We're gonna go into After Effects. We're gonna duplicate our footage. We're gonna delete this because we don't need this. So this is gonna be shirt key. We're gonna do a new solid. We're gonna move it over the area of the shirt. We're just gonna draw a shape right over the area that we want to keep. We're going to create a new null object. And now we're going to apply that data that we just made. Oops. Make sure it's set to transform because we don't need anything else. We're going to apply that. We have all our position information for the shirt. So this will be shirt 
of track. And we're going to parent the mat to that track. So we're gonna set the shirt key to alpha mat. And if we solo just the shirt key, you can see what it's doing. We're just isolating that area all on its own. So these three, we're actually going to pre-compose. And this is gonna be our shirt roto. So now that we got our shirt isolated, we're gonna key this. Uh, and the first thing we have to do is add solid composite to it. And we're gonna shift this to black. And we're gonna try and do a Luma key on just the shirt. So we're gonna do extract. We'll bring the black in. Oh, we'll have to do this the opposite way. Invert, and we're gonna invert the alpha. So now we have just the alpha of our shirt. We're gonna duplicate our base once more, and we're gonna set this to alpha mat. And now we've brought our shirt over the text by keying. Granted, if this was better footage, we wouldn't have a lot of this artifacting, but that's easy enough to remove. All we have to do is add a simple choker and just up it till it goes away. And if you have some chattering like this, you could throw a key cleaner on there and it should smooth it out a little. So that's how I would quickly do something like this where I didn't really want to roto and I didn't really want to worry about the specifics. I would just do a bunch of keying to get all the layers that I needed on top of the fill that I was putting in. This isn't a compositing tutorial. This isn't showing you a polished product. This is just showing you some techniques to help hopefully speed up your workflow. If this video was helpful for you, drop a like, maybe even subscribe. I'm trying to make more videos and knowing that you guys are learning from them and that these are helpful will hopefully inspire me to continue making them and uh, try and put as much information out there as I can. Like I said, hopefully these techniques help you and I'll see you guys next time.